Welcome to Photography BB's Artistry Effects for Photoshop. In this tutorial, we're going to look at our brand new Impressionist Photo Painter effect. This effect is not a typical Impressionist painting style effect. Rather, it's an Impressionist photography effect, where photographers take an image by shaking the camera in a vertical motion while making the exposure. This results in a painterly style image with a lot of motion blur in the image itself, which resembles an impressionist painting, but all done in camera. Now this Photoshop effect simulates that in camera effect, but in Photoshop and allows for some further controls over the final effect for a gorgeous impressionist photo painter style of image. Let's jump on over to Photoshop and take a look at how we use this easy to use template effect. Okay, so the first thing we'll do once we're in Photoshop is to open one of the three included template files. Now I have the landscape orientation template file open here. And normally what we see on the screen are the instructions that tell us to double click the top layer to add our image. Now if I toggle off the effect itself, which is this impressionist photo paint layer right here, you can see the instructions show up more clearly. But we're going to leave that on right now and we are going to do exactly that. We're going to double click the top layer thumbnail right here, not the actual text of the layer because that will just edit the text here. So we're going to click on the thumbnail right here, double click it to open the smart object layer and add our own image. So we'll double click that. And this opens the smart object layer that we'll be working with. So to achieve this effect, all we have to do is place our image on top of this layer. And we can do that by going to the menu file, place embedded or place, depending on which version of Photoshop you're running and select an image to work with. Now I'm going to work with this one here and click on place. And that places the image into that smart object layer. Now you can drag these anchor points around if you would like to increase or decrease the size of the image, depending on how it winds up using your photo. I'm going to increase it a little bit more and we'll go to about there. And once you've uh, set your image the way you want to, you can finally set and place the image by clicking on the check mark here and that places your image. Now that we've placed our own photograph into the smart object layer, all we have to do is close the smart object and save the smart object. So to do that, we'll just click on the little X right here and we'll be prompted to save or don't save, but we'll say save. And depending on the speed of your computer, this may take a moment and Photoshop takes care of everything. There we go. So we have our final effect here and we can uh, make some tweaks and improvements to this image depending on your preferences. So let's take a look at the layer stack right here. And the first option that we have is a layer folder called optional controls. If we toggle that layer group open, we have some toning controls, some color and some texture controls. So let's start with the toning options and see what's available here. We can toggle that layer group open and we have four different options inside. We have darken, brighten and add vibrance and add contrast to the image. Now to apply these to the image, all we have to do is turn on the visibility of these layers. So if we wanted to darken this image, we could click on that. That darkens it a little bit. If we wanted to brighten the image, we can click on brighten image that brightens it up. We can add more vibrance. Now that's a little bit subtle and I'll show you how we can have control over all of these and I'll just demonstrate adding contrast like that. So for any of these layers, whether it's darken, brighten, add vibrance or contrast, we can actually control the strength or if amount of that effect. So we'll go back to add vibrance because that one was very subtle and maybe we wanted to punch up the colors a little bit. So we can double click on the icon right here. And this adjustment layer will allow us to either crank up the vibrance, lower it down, and also control the amount of saturation as well. 
So let's say we're happy with that. We can leave it at that right there and leave that layer turned on. Another thing you can do with these, if you like the effect but it's a little bit too strong, is you can decrease the layer opacity by sliding it down. And you'll see we remove the vibrance that way as well. Now I'm going to go with the default settings that I have for this image already. So I'm going to turn that off because it was off by default. I'll close up the toning layer group here and we'll move on to the colors group. Now this colors group has 10 different options of color as well as a black and white option and a color mood option. And to apply these, all we need to do is turn on the layer visibility again. And you'll see that applies this sort of a uh, teal green um, overlay to the to the image. Now we can double click that and of course change it to something else. If we wanted to warm up the image, we could probably go down into the warmer colors here. And you can see that you can add a different toning to the overall image depending on where you land on the color picker here. So I'm gonna cancel that. So that's one way of controlling the, uh, the color sort of mood of the image. I can turn that off. Of course, we can go with black and white. That actually looks pretty cool. Uh, and then there's some color options. I always love color option number one. I find it does a very nice job in the shadows and highlights. But of course, you can play with all of the options here and see which one best suits your image. Oh, number three looks great too in this image. Uh, if you find one like this that you like, but the colors are a little bit too strong for you, again, highlight that layer to make it active and then just decrease the opacity of that to reduce the strength. And you'll see we still have that color tone from the original. There we go. Now we have this color option three applied, but not quite as strong as when it was up at 100%. So I'm going to toggle that layer off again so that we're just working with the original default. And I'll toggle the color layer group closed. And lastly, we have a textures group here. So the textures group adds a light leak effect over the image. And by toggling that on and off, you'll see what that does. So this would be the original image with the um, Impressionist Photo Paint effect here. But we've ad also added this light leak to give it a sort of grungy look. Now, if you like that look, which I happen to, um, you can keep that on at 100% or once again, decrease the opacity to reduce the strength of that effect. So if we go down to around 54% here and toggle it on and off, you can see we do have the effect now, but it's not quite as strong as before. And similarly, we have a noise layer. So if I zoom in to, let's say 100% here, you can see we've applied some noise to the image and that's just to complete the overall sort of effect of this style of image but we can remove that. And we are getting a little bit of noise also from the light leak grunge uh, overlay here as well. So I can turn that off and you'll see it's much smoother without those. And I'll show you the effect that you can play with uh, using a combination of both of these. So we'll crank the noise, oh no, keep the noise where it was, crank the overlay back up to 100, and we'll zoom back out to 35%. So you can see the full image here. One thing I like to do with some of these images is I do like this sort of grungy noise effect with this style of photo, but sometimes it is a little bit strong. So we can actually highlight the textures layer group as a whole, which contain these two, and we can decrease the opacity of that. So we can bring it down a little bit. So we're still getting the light leak and the noise, but we're just reducing the strength of it a little bit. Again, if we go to zero, you'll see it wipes it out completely or we can go back up. Uh, we'll leave it around 55 because I do like a hint of that in this image. So we'll toggle the textures layer group closed. And now we have one more adjustment layer here. So there are many ways that we can add colors and adjust toning and contrast. And this is just another option for doing that in one layer. So rather than going through the options in these folders where you have much more control, this one is sort of a general controllable layer. And if we double click on the layer swatch here, it brings up a color picker. And by moving the color picker to um, white, or to the darker, we can add contrast to the image like that. 
and by going into the color we can add a sort of toning as well so if we wanted again something warm we could move into the warm colors like that so we can warm up the image this way and control contrast this way as well uh, so it's just another way to accomplish what we can do um, in a more refined way with these above layer controls here. So we'll leave that one for uh, for now, but I encourage you to play with this one and also to play with the layers inside these optional controls as well. You can have a lot of fun making the image your own. So we'll close up the optional controls and we can move on to the actual effect itself. Now the one thing we have in here, and I'm gonna to toggle open this layer group for the Impressionist Photo Paint layers. We have the Photo Paint layer. This is the image style that we've got right here. And we also have one that's turned off called Restore Details. So sometimes you'll have an image like this one of the Eiffel Tower, where you might want to restore some of the detail just to part of the image or even to all of it if you want to. So we can turn the visibility on and you'll see it lessens the effect, but you still get that sort of motion photo, impressionist photo look to it. So one thing we can do here is we can apply it to the whole image by just turning on the visibility or we can use the layer mask here and I'll actually invert the layer mask for this particular image to make it black and that again black on a layer mask will hide what's on these layers and if you paint with white it will reveal what's on the layer so if we want to restore details and reveal details we're going to paint with a white brush so we can activate the brush here we can go to a soft round brush and if I paint back in, my opacity, brush opacity is at 30%. I'm going to crank it up to 100% so that you can see the effect more clearly. So if I paint back in, now I'm just restoring details just in that area alone. So if I toggle on and off the visibility of the restore details layer, you'll see because of the layer mask that I've applied here, I'm only affecting the Eiffel Tower itself. So that gives you a lot more control. Maybe I want to restore some detail in here as well. So again, painting on the layer mask with a white brush. I'm going to restore some detail to this area as well. Now, if the overall effect is too strong, there are ways to control that as well. I'm going to close up the effect group. So we do have the original image underneath this effect. So if I turn off the effect, you'll see the original image. If I turn on the effect, we've got the effect there with the modifications that we've made. Now, if I still want to bring back a little bit more of the original image, I can highlight this layer group and lower the opacity. And that brings back some of the original image. But again, it might be, um, not the right balance or blend for the overall image to do it as a whole like this. So we can go back to 100% and that's why we have the um, layer mask on this impressionist group here. So if I want to hide the effect, I'm going to paint with black this time. So I'm going to activate the brush tool and this time I'm going to paint with a black brush to reveal the original image underneath like that. Now that is definitely too strong and very unrealistic. So I'm going to undo that control or command Z. And I'm going to lower the brush opacity down to, let's say 25%. And I can paint again. So I'm restoring some of the original detail. There we go. And I think in this area will look nice too have a little bit of detail come back. And that might be too much detail. So we can hit X to exchange the swatches back to white. And we'll hide some of that effect. There we go. Good, so you can have a lot of fun playing with the blending of these uh, and a combination of this using the original image and the Impressionist Photo Paint layer group as well. So I hope you have a lot of fun playing with this. As you can see, it's extremely easy to use and very fast to add your photo and create a beautiful Impressionist Photo Painter style of artwork.
Thank you very much for choosing Artistry Actions and Artistry Effects by Photography BB. Happy Photoshopping!